Hey, opposing good evening, everybody. This is Sports Sound News. I'm Jeff Borg, and this is going to be our next MLB trade video as Chris Bassett moves on for a Mets top prospect, JT Ginn, who was ranked as their fifth prospect, and also another pretty good pitcher as well in Adam <clears throat> Oler, who they were able to get. Also, who was a guy that went from almost quitting baseball to persevering and becoming one of the best relief arms in the Mets system. Pitched very well at AA and AAA last year. And is a guy that's now at the age of 27. An interesting piece to watch in the Oakland A's system because we just know how good those A's are at working their magic with pitchers. The, the traded Chris Bassett is an A example as now we talk to him, talk about him before we go on to Again, the traded Chris Bassett to the Mets is a perfect example of a guy that was a solid pitcher his entire MLB career, but then went to the A's and just, it, like a snap of a finger, became a great top-line starter because they really honed him into just focusing on his best A stuff and just honing in and just keep throwing it. And as Clay Holmes talked about, I'm on the one podcast uh, with John Boy, how he kind of just keeps throwing to the spot and lets the pitch do its thing. That's exactly what the A's got Chris Bassett to do, and that's what made him really successful and is going to continue to make him successful with the Mets, where he doesn't even have to worry about being a top-line guy because they got Scherzer, DeGrom, Taiwan Walker, and Carlos Cookie Carrasco in that rotation. Their rotation is absolutely stacked. They have a five-man rotation of guys in their best seasons that usually all have decently well below four ERA. So their, their, their rotation is absolutely loaded. Carrasco has the great break ball, breaking ball combination with him being more of a location uh, strikeout type guy or that can also get the grab balls. Obviously, Scherz and DeGrum are some of the best strikeout pitchers in baseball. And Taiwan Walker has really recovered the last couple years of his career and has been very successful lately the last few years to be able to revive himself from being successful at the beginning of his career then going into a lull. So that pitching rotation is loaded. Chris Bassett, when it comes to um, hurling it, he has one of the best uh, sinkers in the entire game. He has a solid mix and four-seam fastball. He throws a cutter, a changeup as well, and then also throws a slider as well as mixing in the curveball. He's one of those rare guys that actually you don't want to hone it in in terms of not throwing all your pitches because he's so good at just trusting his stuff now that he was always a solid pitcher, like I said, but ever since he went to the A's, he's really bought in on his stuff and mixes in everything where even that curveball when he mixes in and throws guys off because he only throws it about 7%, but it's still a solid one. The slider's a good pitch. The change-up's a good pitch. The cutter. He's a very good guy at locating his pitches and putting them on in the right plane, in the right spot, <clears throat> so he doesn't really have to worry about anything. Um, when it comes to his overall numbers too, even when it comes to watching him, this guy's great at controlling the strike zone because I'm a guy that likes to go off of what I see before I just go off of his overall uh, stats. But his stats are fantastic in his career. He's a three four seven uh, ERA guy. But he's a guy too that really controls hard contact, a guy that really controls the zone, and is a double play wizard. Uh, he's a guy that with this good fielding the Mets have, I think is going to fit in smoothly because I see the Mets having a pretty good fielding team and I don't think they really have to worry about that all too much that I think he's going to fit in pretty nicely there with the New York Mets because you got obviously a great guy um, in Eduardo Escobar who's a good fielder to pick it. you got Frenchie Lindor and you got others there including even the comeback of Robinson Cano this year Mark Connor, who can field in the outfield Marte who's a great fielder so I think Bassett fits perfectly with filling out this rotation that's absolutely loaded with the Mets so the Mets get Chris Bassett. They move on from JT Ginn, their fifth prospect, and also Adam Ola, who's going to be a really interesting relief pitcher to watch at the age of 27, really started coming on strong if they're debating quitting baseball, and is now going to get a chance with the A's, who worked their magic really well with pitchers. And JT Ginn, I think, is going to end up being a front line of the rotation starter for the Oakland Athletics, given time, because he's a perfect guy, a perfect A's player to get in, a top prospect from another team that they put in their rotation either this year, well, he actually only pitched an A ball, so I don't think he'll really get caught up this year, but maybe next year, and then continue to grow, and then he's a guy that's not going to get paid for a while, so they're going to have a great guy, similar to how the Rays were able to have Glass now for a while before they have to had to pay him. That's exactly what they're going to hope to do with Ginn, who has two great plus pitches, a great sinking fastball, so they're getting traded a sinker ball for a great sinker baller, 
and a great slider that he throws on a couple different planes to really throw hitters off as well. JT Ginn, I think, is going to be a stud. I think Adam Oler has a chance to even be in their bullpen as well, so I think this is a good trade for both teams. And then Chris Bassett is a perfect player that's already a finished product that the Mets know what they're getting from one of the top contending teams in the NL. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and have a great and safe, pleasant day. Please continue to follow for more MLB, NBA, NHL, and also some NFL videos as well. Peace out and stay safe.